right imitation, enjoyable and successful, with particular reference to vocabulary teaching. So, uh, I'm going to talk about three areas. The first is a general introduction for a few moments to this approach to pronunciation teaching. Uh, the second is specific on vocabulary. And the third is to how your students, and indeed yourself, can continue this work using the app and one or two other things. <clears throat> so, uh, let's start. Uh, first point to make, uh, probably something you've often thought yourself, every lesson is a prom lesson, even if you're not teaching prom, because, of course, students are always rehearsing some form of pronunciation. You know, when we read and we write and we speak and we listen and we think and we remember, even when we do it inside our heads quietly, uh, some sort of pronunciation is being rehearsed. And the question is, which pronunciation? If the teacher has taught the new pronunciation, that can be rehearsed. If the teacher has not yet taught a new pronunciation, of course, the student will have to use mother tongue pronunciation. That's the default position. So just a, a point there, which I constantly need to remind myself that pronunciation is always in circulation. Um, there is no lesson that isn't a pronunciation rehearsal. So anyone who says they don't teach pronunciation, it, it's not quite, quite the case. Now, uh, a, a couple of problems and a couple of solutions before we get on to the vocab bit. The first problem that I would just like to draw your attention to, uh, and this is something that I work on a lot, is that for most students, and perhaps even for many teachers, pronunciation seems kind of mysterious. You know, what does it consist of? What, what is there? Is there a map of the territory? And the solution to that, in my view, is the Sound Foundation's pronunciation chart, which does provide a map, a thinking tool, uh, and it, you're familiar with it because it's this thing here. And uh, it shows uh, all the sounds that are needed for words in connected speech. It shows how and where sounds are made, uh, and so on. So let's just have a quick look at that. Here we are, here's the chart. Uh, as you can see, up here are the vowels, over here are the diphthongs, down here are the consonants. Uh, front of the mouth uh, up there, over here is the back of the mouth, uh, bottom of the mouth along there, top of the mouth along there, and so on. Uh, if we go to the consonants, then we've got the front of the mouth, back of the mouth for plosives, front of the mouth, back of the mouth for uh, fricative, friction sounds, front of the mouth, back of the mouth for nasals, and so on. It's a kind of map, and it, it, it's all there. It shows all the sounds that students need for words and for connected speech. It shows all the simplifications and so on. So that's the whole syllabus. It's all there. It's just one page. Not like grammar and vocabulary, we have hundreds of pages. This is page one, the end. This is all there is. So, uh, that solution, in, my, in a sense, that solution to problem number one. What does it consist of? Well, this is it. Uh, problem number two, and, and, and solution number two. Problem number two is that pronunciation often tends to be cognitively taught. Cognitively taught. But pronunciation is, of course, a, a physical and muscular activity. It's about muscular coordination. And in a way, it's more like teaching dance uh, than teaching grammar. Pronunciation is physical. We can, we can do grammar and vocabulary uh, cognitively, perhaps, but we can't do prom cognitively. It's a muscle thing. So what's the solution to that? <clears throat> in my view, the solution is connect with the muscles that make the pronunciation difference. In other words, we have to develop a physical knowledge from muscular experience, as opposed to a theoretical knowledge from, from books, which is the kind of stuff that we teachers may well have. But actually, it's, the, it's that physical knowledge that we need. And just as a reminder, there are two routes to making new sounds. One is through the ear, the typical listen and repeat. But the other is through the muscles, which is actually, you know, the whole thing is not as simple as listen and repeat, because we have to access the muscles because they are the ones that have got the habit of the mother tongue. We need to get behind that habit. Okay, uh, so here is an, a, a, an approach <coughs> which is what I use, which is t using thinking in terms of four core muscle buttons. Four buttons. I, I use the word button because 
you know, they're on computers and they're on, on smartphones and, and, and buttons are everywhere. We press buttons to live. Uh, and uh, rather than naming muscles and getting into that, I'm just thinking of this. Button number one is the tongue, which basically moves forward and backwards. It also curves. Uh, button number two is the lips, uh, which basically spread uh, and they can round and go forward. Uh, and they can spread and go back. Button number three is the jaw moving up and down with the tongue. And button number four is the voice. Now, students do those all day long with their mother tongue. But the point is to be able to do that consciously and at choice in order to find new sounds. So we've got to reconnect with those muscles so that they can be done consciously to get behind the habit. And this is, if there's one new word uh, from this webinar, it's this one, proprioception. Here we are, proprioception. <clears throat> now that was a new word for me not long ago and it took me a while to learn how to say it. I think you say proprioception, at least that's how I say it. And what that is, it's a word from neurology, which is the inner knowing or sensing of what our muscles are doing and how much pressure is being applied. So if you pick up a, a glass, uh, it, you need to know how hard you're gripping it. Too loose and it drops, too tight and you break it. Uh, that is it's pro your proprioception that tells you that. And as far as pronunciation is concerned, proprioception is what will help us to get to know again our tongue and where it is, our lips, what they're doing, our voice on and off, and the jaw, and the, the, uh, the interrelation between those four things. So, uh, <coughs> now I'd like to um, talk about vocabulary teaching with that little sort of introduction um, on which to base it. Um, if I'm to summarize that introduction, it's basically, it's a chart, and it is with that that I think one can integrate pronunciation teaching in the class. And there is a constant reminder that pronunciation is physical. It is the physicality that we need to be working on. That means that teachers need to find these sounds in their own mouths to help students to do the same. So <clears throat> given that as a sort of basis to, to keep reflecting on, uh, I'd like to look at um, ways of integrating vocabulary. Uh, and pronunciation, ways of integrating pronunciation fully into vocabulary teaching. So what I'm going to do is to take three very simple routes. Each is very simple and each is pretty similar, as you will see. Once you get the hang of one, you'll get the hang of all three. And I'm going to take a little text, a Macmillan text from a book, and out of that book, I'm, out of that text, I'm going to take uh, just a few words and perhaps just illustrate with uh, maybe one of those words. <coughs> so. Uh, in number one, the first impression the students have of the new word is that they hear it. Perhaps you say it, or maybe they hear it on a recording. Uh, the second uh, route is that the, the first impression they have of the new word is that they see the spelling of it. Perhaps they're in a reading text, or perhaps you've written it on the board. And in the third approach, uh, the first impression that they have of the word is that they are saying it because you have fed them the sounds and I'm going to illustrate that as well. So we've got these three different approaches, uh, three different starting points for a new word. I'll illustrate them and uh, in fact there's something that you can use very, very quickly uh, but we're going to go a little bit slowly. So here's the first one. Right. We're using vocab from a course book, so that's our example. The course book is uh, uh, new straightforward. Here's a little text. And uh, if you just have a, a quick look at that text. So there we are. It's about a, a magician and so on. Now, uh, here I've taken a few words, and these words uh, are, let us say, the ones that we are going to work on or attend to in particular during uh, this part of the lesson. So let's just, for the sake of argument right now, let's just take this word magician, all right? So I'm going to illustrate these three uh, root maps, these three routes to integrating prawn vocab uh, using that word taken from this text. So that's the, the kind of setting, the classroom setting. So let's have a look at uh, root one. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to refer to the chart in a moment. Here's root one. Now, take it easy. I know there's 12 lines there. Um, 
but we'll just take them one at a time and you'll see that this is terribly straightforward and actually <clears throat> already probably complete common sense to you. So, this is route one, starting with hearing the word. Okay, so the teacher or the audio equipment says magician, let's suppose. Magician. I say magician. And in this case, the students listen internally several times. Let me explain that. I say it once, I the teacher, and you, the students, hear it inside your head, in your inner ear, several times. So I say magician. You don't repeat aloud, but you let it repeat in your mind's ear. So I'm just going to do that again. I say it once, and you let it repeat internally. Here we go. Magician. Okay, and what I hope is that you can hear my voice saying that word inside your head. Okay, so that's step one. It just takes a couple of seconds. So instead of a uh, quick repeat after me, I'm saying don't repeat, listen internally. Then, step two, I say, okay, class, say it aloud. Uh, let's listen to one or two people. And if you want to do uh, step one again, okay, we can do step one again. So, there's that pause while they taste the word internally on, on, in their minds, in their ear. Terribly important. Then the third question is, all right, uh, you've all said it now. How many sounds do you think? Uh, and the students count the sounds in that word magician. It's not actually important how many sounds there are, but what do you do when I say to you how many sounds in that word? Well, yeah, you start to count them, but how do you count them? You count them by separating them in your head. And it's a brilliant question for getting students to separate out the sounds in their mind's ear and to count them. They may have the sounds accurately or not accurately, but the first step is to separate them out. How many sounds are there? Oh, yeah, right. So, and then I say, how many got class? And they say, oh, five, six, seven. All right, let's count them together. So I, with my fingers, I say, what's the first one? And they say, no. Uh, j, e, sh. Where's my other finger? Uh, there we are. Uh, mag magician. We count them on the fingers. How many sounds? Seven. So uh, then I say to them, okay, could you just join those sounds up? Make the word like in English. Say it nice and quick. It's a good instruction. Now. In English, they know what it means. It means join everything up and say it with a, little, a, bit, a bit of energy, you know. So, magician. Before they were going, okay, join it up, magician. So now what I do is say, okay, you've looked at the sounds, you've got an idea of what they are, you may not be entirely certain, but now let's go to the chart and let's find them. So, the next thing is, I invite a student to come up to the chart and say, okay, here's a pointer. How, you know how many sounds, you've said the different ones aloud, you point at what you think. So, maybe the student more or less knows, so it goes there, all right, and then there, okay, and then there, all right, and so on. And <coughs> the point here is that the student at the chart is silent. They're just thinking the sounds. They're not saying it, they're thinking them. So it's thinking internally and finding externally on the chart, like that. The rest of the class are actually saying whatever is pointed at, not what they want the student to point at, but what the student actually is pointing at. So the student gets feedback on what they've pointed at. So if the student points there, uh, the class says, M. And if the student points there, they say, uh. If the student points there, they say, J. But if the student gets the wrong one, the student points there, they say, M. And the student points there, and they say, ah. And that can happen because of the spelling. And then uh, the student at the chart thinks, well, that's, I'm after uh. And they said, ah. So maybe I better look again. Oh yeah, let's try this one. So the student points there, and the class say, uh. Okay, and then the student at the chart carries on. Now I'm after J. Is it J? Is it? Maybe the student points there, and the, the class says, K. And say, oh, wait a minute, that's not what I'm after. Let me try again. So in this way, uh, the, the, the students negotiate their way through the chart. And the thing is, uh, it, it's, it's, it's very quick. After you've done this a handful of times over, a, over a, uh, quite a number of words over a few days, the students are starting to get there to know the way around the chart. So, anyway, let's suppose we get to the end. Merger, 
E, V, A, E. Uh, mm. Okay, so it, and I say, okay, class, could you say that nice and quick? Join it up. Again, you know, uh, do it in English. Student points to the chart, we've just done that. Student does silently, the class says whatever sound is pointed at. Uh, once it's correct, I then again say to the class, okay, speed it up, get it in, join those sounds together, make it nice and English sounding. And then I say to that student, okay, could you spell the word on the board in ordinary letters? And here we get onto another kind of awareness. Ah, yes, in English, the number of, of, of spelling letters is not necessarily the same as the number of sounds. How interesting. This is a real awareness that we need to notice. So, how many sounds? Well, they already said. How many letters? Well, is it the same or is it different? So, I now I get, ask the student to take the pen and write it on the board. So, you can see, although it looks long, it's actually uh, it, it's a very uh, simple sequence. Here, I'm saying the word, uh, they're listening internally, they say it aloud. Then I say, well, how many sounds? They count it, we, do it, we check that out. Uh, then I say, can you point them on the chart? Uh, they do so. And then I say, okay, make it, uh, join it up, say it nice and fluently, and then write it on the board. So there are there's several steps in there. The first is to say the sound, the, se the word. The second is how many sounds. The third is uh, find it on the chart. And the fourth is now write it in ordinary letters. <clears throat> so there's a little sequence. You don't have to do that with every word. Just do it with some words. And you do it with any word that's causing trouble. Uh, it's problematic. Just slow down. And this is a way of doing kind of roadside repairs on individual words as and when needed. You might do this for several of the words that you've chosen to present, especially if they're new ones. <clears throat> Here's route map number two, and it's the same except for the bits that are in blue. So you can see that this is pretty much the same idea as what we've just done. This time, the students start by seeing the spelling. In other words, whoops, there we are. Uh, teacher writes magician on board, or someone writes magician on the board. All right, so now we're seeing it. There's some English letters. Maybe I know the word, maybe I don't know the word, uh, but it's certainly not one I'm very, very familiar with. And the teacher asks the students to say it. We listen to a few people having a go at it. Uh, I, the teacher, perhaps select one that is, uh, for the moment, uh, good enough. Or if not, I offer uh, it myself. And then we're back onto the previous track. Well, how many sounds? Um, point out the sounds on the chart. And then uh, write it. So we've just started at a different place namely with seeing the word rather than hearing the word, but after that we get onto the same track, uh, finding the word on the chart, dealing with any snags that arise as we do that, and finally saying it nice and quickly, uh, and how many letters, how many times, actually writing it. So what we've done is we've found the pronunciation, we've found the spelling, we've got the rhythm of the word, and we've used the chart to kind of uh, as the whiteboard of pronunciation. The chart is the place where you can work out all this stuff. You know, remember that the idea of the chart is not to teach phonetic letters, not to teach phonemic symbols. The idea of the chart is to uh, provide a map of the sound that happens to have phonemic symbols on it, but that's not what we're teaching. We are teaching uh, awareness of the individual sounds and especially where they are formed in the mouth and how they sound. So that's uh, number two, uh, vocab starting with seeing the spelling. And here's number three, start with seeing the sound. So you can input a, a new vocab in this third way. So instead of writing it or saying it, let's do it this way. The teacher points out this on the chart. In other words, does what I have already uh, just demonstrated. Here we are. So I point there, and the students say m. I point there, and they say uh. I point there, and they say j. I point there, and they say e. I point there, and they say sh. No, sorry. Yes, sh. I point there, and they say uh. I point there, and they say m. And then I say, okay, maybe get someone else up to point the symbols, and I say, okay, join them together. Make it in English. And then, of course, we need to get the stress on the 
second syllable. So I might try, I might say, hey, listen to me, guys, magician. Where's the stress? And I might get them to put it on the first syllable. So it's magician, or the second, magician, or the third, magician. And so they can just hear the difference and feel the difference in their mouths so that they become really aware of the energy distribution that is at the base of uh, word stress. <coughs> so th this way, I start by pointing that out in the chart. I ask them to connect the sounds, and I assist in finding the stress and so on. Then I say, OK, now join it up, make it nice in English, make it fairly fluent. And then again, these, uh, how many sounds? I count the sounds. Um, and then I get a, a student to spell the word on the board, and perhaps I get a student to come up and point on the chart. So <clears throat> you can see that the same ideas are being circulated whichever way we start. We may start with seeing the word, or saying the word, or hearing the word. Uh, the same ideas come round, which is help the student to get some clarity, uh, get it on the chart, and find the spelling. It doesn't really matter where you start, but those are the three things to do. In doing that, students are really beginning to understand pronunciation. It doesn't mean to say they're getting the sounds absolutely correct, but they are attending, attending to the sounds. And just the fact of counting the sounds internally in their mind's ear is sensitizing to them to what is a sound and which are the sounds that are English. They're beginning to hear them. So <clears throat> those are uh, three ways in which I would work with vocabulary. You may be thinking, well, that's all very well, but if the students don't already know the chart, how can I do that? And the answer to that is, yes, you do need to put the chart into circulation so that it's a usable tool. For me, that takes about, I guess, about uh, <clears throat> a lesson, or half a lesson. And you can see uh, demonstrations of this on YouTube um, and on Macmillan Education. Um, just putting the chart into circulation so that students have got an idea of how it works and which sounds are where. They don't have to. It's not a matter of memorizing it. They, they get to know it as they use it. Now, <coughs> I hope that you find that either useful if it's new or useful if it's a kind of revision and a systematization of things. My basic point is integrating the chart with everything that we do. This means the chart needs to be on or beside the board at the front of the class. No good having it on a notice board at the side of the class or at the back of the class. It needs to be accessible. Uh, as I said before, the chart is the whiteboard of PROM. You can use a, a white, the ordinary whiteboard for grammar and vocabulary and stuff, but for PROM, you really need something like this. Now, I'm going to uh, just finish off by <coughs> summarizing some of those points that might be useful to go over again. Uh, so here's six points. Number one, I suggest to any teacher, get easy with those three sequences that I've just demonstrated. You don't have to do that sequence for every word by any means, but it's good to be able to do it for any word. Number two, the person pointing at the chart does so silently, whether it's you or a student, and, it's, and the class uh, says aloud whatever is pointed at, and that gives feedback to the person doing the pointing. In English, is this, it's just a great and very simple instruction, which means speed it up and say it with a bit of life and energy, and they all know what it means, uh, and they find that amusing after they've been struggling to say a word with the individual sounds, then just put it back into context, make it with a bit of flow. Uh, as I said before, we are not uh, teaching symbols, we are teaching sound muscular coordinations. And they happen to have symbols which eventually they will get to memorize anyway. Uh, as regards the meaning of vocab, well, you've already got your own way of doing that, and, and that's fine. Uh, but what I'm saying is, at the point of meeting the new word, get the prom in circulation. And look, here's the important thing. Physical, acoustic, cognitive, neurological connections. <laughs> All right, that's a, that's a good phrase for the morning. Uh, these neurological connections are vital. They are vital memory hooks. And they start being formed immediately. It's, that's why I say it's, it's, it's really 
it's not good enough to present prom later on after the new language because they've already started rehearsing it and forming the memory hooks with mother tongue pronunciation of the new English word. So we do need the new prom in circulation at the same time. So my little mantra is, uh, you know, prom at the point of purchase of new language. When, you, when you're buying the new language, that's when you need the prom because that's when the memory hooks start forming. Um, <coughs> Okay, let's uh, just move on to something which you may know about, you may not. There's an app, it's called Sounds, the pronunciation app, which goes with uh, this chart and um, for your smartphone. And it's a good, it, it embodies, actually, these three ways of working with vocabulary and with sounds. So here on the left, you can see... Uh, the, key, the phonetic keyboard, the, the sound keyboard, and actually that's the same layout there as the chart, which is smart, isn't it? And over here we've got the ordinary uh, uh, keyboard. So the thing is, uh, you can have a, a bunch of different games. Maybe you um, click and you have here, look, the word in spelling, and you have to find it, you have to, sorry, there's the word in spelling, and you have to find the uh, pronunciation. Or you have it the other way around, you've got the word in uh, phonemic letters and you have to find the spelling. Or you can speak it and listen to yourself. So uh, these are some of the things you'll find on the app. First, you can choose British or American English chart and a British or American English word list. We've been using the uh, British English chart, of course. Um, and even with the word list, you can listen to the model, you can record your voice, you can listen and compare, you can check word meanings. Uh, with a chart, you can touch to hear the sounds and touch to hear sample words. And then when you get on to the practice, uh, again, you've got those same three things that I've just been talking about. You can listen and do games and, and little competitions and quizzes around listening where you select the phonemes to practice, you hear words, and you try to find the uh, phonemes on the chart. Or you can start by reading it, and there you actually... Uh, Read, you know, you select the sounds you want to practice and you see the phonemic spelling and you supply the alphabetic spelling. Or you can start with the writing where you select the sounds of practice and then in this case you see the spelling. So um, there are three ways which you can, uh, and, and there's a lot of voc vocab on the app and you can always uh, top up with batches of uh, 500 further words which are e easy to download. So that is the pronunciation app. And that sort of, well that definitely backs up the same approach to integrating charts as a way of uh, as a way of integrating the learning of sounds, the muscular learning of sounds with the cognitive learning of meaning and grammar. Really important they support each other. Uh, last but not least, if this approach interests you and you'd like to develop these kind of approaches further, you've got various options. Number one is to go to my blog which is here Number two is to use these classroom charts. Well, I mean, frankly, I, <laughs> I can't imagine teaching without such a chart, but then that's me. But I suggest that uh, you get hold of them, and they're available from Macmillan, and they're free. Uh, you've got a, a whole bunch of demo video uh, lessons, which I've done on, uh, some are on Macmillan Education, some on One Stop, and some on YouTube. Uh, I've recently done 35 three-minute videos on different, each of the different sounds, treating each of the different sounds, and you can find that there at macmillanenglish.com, pronunciation skills, so go along there and have a look at these 35 three-minute videos which are talking to you, talking to teachers. There's the app, which I've just uh, referred to, there's my book, Sound Foundations, um, which of course has this and very much more in it, and finally, if you are deeply interested, uh, you can arrange for in-depth teacher training. Uh, one day, five day, ten days uh, in your country uh, and these courses do exist here at the moment I uh, teach lots of university in the summer and at uh, Bell Teacher Training Centre so those things may interest you. So that is a very uh, ra rapid run through the whole thing and look, uh, just, <laughs> just to finish with, I did a Macmillan tour in, uh, uh, in the Far East and this was taken in, in Beijing and everything, well, lots of things in China are big, as you can imagine, including uh, this chart. 
so there I was uh, demonstrating in this most enormous chart. There's no way of working with, <laughs> with the sounds higher up. I couldn't reach them. And so Paz, who works out there, she took this uh, photo uh, and we captioned it, uh, the Great Wall of Sound. You know, Great Wall of China, ha ha, Great Wall of Sound. Anyway, there we are, uh, the Great Wall of Sound. And that was taken in China. So, um, that was a quick run through and uh, a, I'm sorry to have spent half an hour just talking at you. I hope that you found that uh, either usable or interesting or even possibly both. Um, and uh, it's the way of the webinar that uh, I end up talking rather than interacting with you people. But I did have you in mind. Now, there may well be some questions and I'm going to try to have a look at these. I don't quite know where to start with all the questions. Perhaps there aren't any questions. Oh, you said lots of thank you. Well, that's nice. Thank you for saying thank you. Uh, let's see if I can find any particular questions. Yeah, uh, are these, this webinar will be available, I think, next week, and also the slides will be available separately uh, as, as part of the webinar, but also separately, so you can download those. Yeah, that will be available. Let's just see what else is there. Uh, oh, it's really nice to hear this. Uh, what do I think about teaching from as a separate skill? Well, I think for people that uh, are interested in that, that's really worth doing because there's no doubt that when uh, people get interested enough and when you've got a good methodology it's possible for people to really acquire a very very good pronunciation indeed if that's what they want I mean as far as I'm concerned good means uh, easily intelligible it doesn't mean without accent everyone's got an accent it means easily intelligible so that you can understand and be understood easily that's for me the aim of prom uh, yes I think that for people that want a separate prom course it's well worth doing that but my first um, port of call really would be to try to integrate PROM absolutely fully so that it is, it is never absent from a bit of study. Every grammar point, every, every uh, working, piece of working vocabulary is full of PROM, both internally in one's mind's ear and, and externally. Well, I'm just looking through thousands of remarks here and People seem uh, the chart is huge. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was huge. It was just immense. I'd like a chart like that to unfold in the classroom. It would be deeply impressive, wouldn't it? The book is out of stock. Oh, I'm sure we can do something about that. Uh, well, I, I'm just looking through questions and. Uh, Mainly there aren't questions. Mainly it's just nice comments for which I which I appreciate. I mean the, the point is this. I mean pronunciation is really important because it helps people to be intelligible. But even more important than that, in my view, pronunciation brings language to life. You know, pronunciation is what brings language to life and life to language. Once you're working on pronunciation, the whole business of uh, repeating structures, the whole business of interacting in class takes on a new glow, a new gloss, a new purpose. It, the physicality enters into it, uh, the liveliness of, of, of gesture and body. Uh, the body, you know, we actually, it is language embodied. Pronunciation is not just certain sounds. Pronunciation is the whole embodiment, the use of muscles. In, in acting language and we too easily get into our heads uh, and get lost in our heads with all the grammar and vocab but pronunciation immediately uh, brings everything back to life it just reminds you hey wake up this is real stuff in real life pronunciation is what does that so uh, over and above it making us intelligible uh, pronunciation I think is what bring I think is what can bring joy and vitality to any lesson at all so that's uh, my view for what it's worth. And uh, I wish you all well. Teachers are very important people. And not everyone remembers that, but we know that.
Uh, it's a very, very important job. So I wish you well uh, and good luck with it all and uh, a lot of pleasure in what you're doing along with all the difficulties that I'm thanks sure you have. Thanks very much, everybody. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Thank you, Adrian. Great Thank job. You, Adrian. Fantastic. I hope you all enjoyed that, everybody. And don't forget, we've recorded everything, and it will be available for you to watch again from next week, uh, along with the slides, which you can download too. So, Adrian, and you can turn off the camera and mic now if you'd like. Um, thanks for coming today uh, into the office to do the talk for us. Great job. Okay, so um, I'm just going to stop the recording and then I'll share the certificate with everybody too.